Thank you uh, very much, Mara, for your uh, very generous introduction. Happy to be associated with uh, uh, Albert the Great and the Dominicans. Jesuits uh, and Dominicans always need a little bit of help to get together, so uh, thank you very much. Um, and also, I'd like to thank the Bioethics Institute for inviting me to give this talk this evening. And I'm particularly honored to give this talk with uh, Cardinal Ambrosik's name attached to it. My understanding has always been that without Cardinal Ambrosik, this Canadian Catholic Bioethics Institute wouldn't exist. And so I'd like to sort of thank him in a special way for that because the Catholic Bioethics Institute um, tries to carry out daily the kind of thing I'm suggesting we need to continue to carry out um, that I'd like to suggest in my talk this evening, which is this idea of the conversation uh, between science and religion. And I also want to uh, note Martin McQueen's role in bringing this lecture um, to birth, I guess, the, the words I'd like to share this evening really are based on sort of a long-standing conversation that I have the pleasure of having with Moira, which Moira said, you know, we really should sort of take this out of the office and our coffee uh, and share it with everyone. So what I'd like to share with you this evening is hopefully a reasonably intelligent translation of some wonderful coffee conversations that I get to have with Moira. To begin the conversation this evening, I'd like to say that um, when people of faith are involved in the healthcare activities, the whole range of healthcare activities, whether it's physicians or nurses or the range of people who care for persons uh, who are ill and in hospital, or whether it's uh, folks who work in government settings in um, making decisions about what kind of healthcare uh, system we're going to have, or hopefully also researchers like myself. If we are people of faith, it seems to me we're trying to do our best to offer some healing to those who need healing and to help those who are healthy to remain healthy. But we know it's only we do our best in the small opportunities we have uh, but as persons of faith, we also then, in the end, I think, hand what we do over to God, who heals in a much wider and deeper way. And so I'd just like to say at the outset that I think that's the context in which people of faith engage the various healthcare activities. So what I'd like to speak about this evening is this idea of the dialogue between the traditions of science and religion. And first I'd like to say a few words about what I think the character of this conversation is, because it's a bit of an unusual conversation. It's important, but it's, it, it's a bit unusual and it has some challenges. It's like the computer right now has some challenges. Um, because the science the, the science community has a set of language and a story and a way of understanding the world. The faith traditions have another story, another language, and another way of understanding the world. It's not that they're incompatible, it's just that they're different. And so I think it's important when we try and take part in this conversation to realize that there are a bunch of language issues we have to do our best to work at so that we communicate our understanding as people of faith um, to others um, in ways that they're able to hear. And that same burden is, of course, on the scientific community to communicate in ways that others are able to hear. It. So this evening, basically, I'd like to sort of take a bit of a historical perspective in the sense that uh, I'd like to look at where are we with a couple of the major bioethical conversations. There are many, actually, but with a couple that I might choose to uh, illustrate things. And where are we today and where would we like to be tomorrow? 
Okay, the, the two examples I'd like to work to use to illustrate some of the points I'd like to make, points about how science progresses, how the progress of science changes the question and changes the conversation, and how that um, therefore demands a slightly different response. Anyway, uh, so I'd like to look at these two examples, uh, stem cells, which everyone knows has been very much for about a decade or so now in the media. The question of the uh, use of stem cells has been one of big promise, but the origin of stem cells, especially human embryonic stem cells, is obviously fraught with controversy. And then the other uh, subject that I'd like to spend a little bit of time with at the end is the Human Genome Project and the way in which I think that's also changing our idea of how medicine is going to be done. Okay. Um, so, again, I'd like to say that there is a critical need to promote a more constructive conversation between the traditions of science and religion. So, both science and religion claim that they are about truth. Religion about transcendent truths, using often using language of relationships. Science about truths of this world as understood through mathematics or through the experimental sciences and using data that can be physically measured and corroborated by other people in other parts of the world doing that same, uh, doing the same experiments. So it's a, it's a different kind of sharing. So the two traditions offer a different vantage point and they privilege different data sets and that's part of the challenge. But both traditions uh, make a claim of desiring to promote a healthy and well-integrated view of the human person and a sustainable world. And so there is a great overlap in some of the goals of both science and religion. And finally, both uh, traditions claim a particular sphere of authority and therefore the right to, parti to participate from that stance of authority in the development of public policy. This is obviously where heads but if we don't have a, a, an effective way of sharing our understanding of these truths that we these truths that we hold as the foundation um, of our worldview. 